Good morning, everyone who have joined us on Facebook and YouTube today. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Ministries of Hope Christian Church Sunday morning sermon. I am Reverend Haverly Hutchings. Let us go to the Lord in prayer and ask his blessings on the word today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, for today. Come, I come before you, Lord God, to give you thanks for your grace and your mercy, asking you to bless this your word. Let your favor be upon me, Lord God, and establish your work in me, Lord God. Let your word bring honor and glory to you. Decrease me, Lord, and allow your Holy Spirit to speak through me to your people, Lord God. Open their ears so that they will hear your word and listen to your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We are located at 385 Carisonville Road, Suite 99 in Stafford, Virginia. Come down and join us when this pandemic is over. We are Ministries of Hope Christian Church is under the pastoral leadership of Senior Pastor Reverend Flory Williams. Her dedication to the Word, her extensive knowledge of the Word, how she backs up her every word with the Word of God, give, help us to get to a higher standard in God. And I thank you so much, Pastor, for keeping us to the Word of God honoring the ministers and my husband and family thanking them for their support and just how close we have gotten in through this pandemic um the strength that they have given me and to you facebook and youtube congregation welcome and may god bless your hearts and change your lives in a mighty way our sermon today comes to us from 2 Samuel chapter 12. This is the second in the two-part series that was started like a couple of Sundays ago. The series is entitled, um, Recognize Your Unrighteousness. Now, during this um, series, we are looking at King David, a man after God's own heart, one of the greatest kings that ever lived. In part one, we saw that David himself was, was not perfect. He wasn't a perfect man. And we were, we were urged to take a look at ourselves, our imperfections and our lives, and identify our, our unrighteousness. So it was clear in part one um, that David had sinned against God. So for those of you who have not seen part one of recognize your unrighteousness it is posted on ministries of hope christian church youtube.com you can find all our, our previous sermons there um uh, and of course part one of this series so you can watch it and get all caught up but to summarize so that we can you know go um so that you can follow along today in part one we were in second samuel chapter 11. in second samuel chapter 11 we spoke about king david's um when he sent his army out to fight the people of um ammon and uh, you know he didn't go with the army he stayed back in jerusalem and when he stayed back in jerusalem he was resting one day and then he got up um, from resting and went out to his the rooftop and looked down and saw this beautiful woman taking a bath After he saw the beautiful woman taking a bath He wanted to know more about her and so he sent to go find out he found out that she was Beersheba the wife of Uriah um, The Hittite who was one of his men out there on the battlefield Although David was told that this was the wife of one of his his um, generals he still sent for her and slept with her um, Beersheba got pregnant and then she told David and now David tried to cover it up and he sent for Uriah to try to have him sleep with her Uriah didn't end up sleeping with her 
And so he sent Uriah back to the battlefield with a note to the general to let the general know that he should put uh, to the captain, the captain was Joab, his nephew, so that he should put Uriah in the front of the battle and have him killed. So now we are at where after David had Uriah killed, he married Beersheba, they had a son, but this son um, came to be, um, David and Beersheba out of their adulterous affair. So David's whole sinful action was not pleasing to the Lord. The end of um, chapter 12, the end of um, 2 Samuel chapter 12 reads that the Lord was not pleased, it says, But the thing that David did, had done, displeased the Lord. So we see here where we left off in um, 2 Samuel chapter 11. Now we're going on to 12. That they, the, David has done his wrong. The Lord was displeased with David. and But David didn't seem to realize that David has done something wrong. So, um, continuing on in chapter 12, as um, David, in chapter 12, went on about his business as, there, as if there was nothing wrong. He was probably, he has become probably a little bit arrogant in thinking that he's a king and he can do whatever he, he wants and indulge in his desires as he would like. He has forgotten that even kings must answer to the one up above. Even kings must answer to God. So no matter how high you are, or no matter what seat you hold in this life, you have to answer to the Lord. Eventually. Now that we're all caught up, in, Sam in second, turn with me to 2 Samuel chapter 12. This chapter continued the saga and that I just outlined. God was not pleased with David's sinful ways. So David was not going to acknowledge it on his own, so he sent a prophet to confront David. Read along while I paraphrase and summarize the story for the sake of time. Nathan, in chapter 1, came to David and told David a parable of a rich man that had many flocks and herds and sheep, and of a poor man that had just one little um, yo lamb. A yo lamb is a young sheep. Now, the, the man that had the one sheep did not treat it as if it was an animal, as if it was livestock. He treated it as if it was one of his own kids. Uh, what the, the, the word of God says he, it, it was unto him like a daughter. So the, this lamb was near and dear to the poor man. But uh, the Bible says a traveler came uh, to visit the rich man. And instead of him preparing, it is customary in those days to offer your guests something to eat, prepare a fine meal for your guests. So the rich man prepared the fine meal for his guests. But instead of using his own lamb, the word of God says he, he took the poor man's sheep and prepared it to feed his, 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 his visitor. Now when David heard this story, David got mad. David got angry. The, the word of God says his anger grew greatly against the rich man. No, because David knew right from wrong. So he got angry and he said to, to Nathan, he said, whosoever did this deserve to die. And in addition, they need to restore the poor man um, livestock to him, not just one, but fourfold because of their action. David was so furious that the rich man had no shame and no pity. 
Little did David know that this story was all about him and how he treated Uriah and Beersheba in, in, um, earlier on in, in 2 Samuel chapter 11. Nathan then revealed to David that this rich man that he was so upset with was him the word of god was lightening him unto the rich man and the poor man was uriah you see that you see us nowadays we are quick to point the finger at the sins of others and we don't have time to look in the mirror we don't take the time to look in the mirror at ourselves we are very quick to pass judgment and wrongdoers but bury our own skeleton so deep that we fail to recognize our own condemnation david did not repent of his, his adulterous ways this far it seems of it as if you know the the, the he, he didn't even seem to remember the guilt that he should be feeling for the death of Uriah. But instead, he had the nerves to pass judgment upon another man's sin when he thought it wasn't him. But God had sent the prophet Nathan to open the eyes of David and lay out his sins before him and allow David to see how guilty he really was. Now I say to you today, what are your sins that you are running from? What sins are you trying to make excuses for so that it can seem right in the eyes of men, but not God? Because God knows all your sins. How many sinful immoralities our society deem acceptable and we go along with it? In Proverbs 15 and verse 3 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding evil and good. The eyes of the Lord is upon us, seeing all the wickedness in this land. And is, he is not pleased with the way that we're treating each other. He is not pleased. He sent his messenger to get our attention. I know that this coronavirus has affected everyone in one way or another. It made some of us stop. It made some of us have the chance to see what really matters in life. It made, it gave us the chance to hear the voice of God over the chaos of our everyday busy schedule. Know that our that our ex excuses are all gone what does our soul look like after we've been so busy and not have the time to take care of our souls instead we had the time to take care of everything else except the word of god god reminded david in chapter 7 of of um in chapter 7 that of all he has done for David before David became king and what brought him to become king he gave him Israel he gave him everything in his bosom he he he, he gave him his master's wife and this and the, the word of God says and if that he gave him Judah and if that was too little and David had asked for more God would have given that to David too but instead in verse 9 David despised the commandments of God. David was not satisfied. David allowed sin to creep into his heart and to reside in the places that should be set aside for God and God alone. You see, sin is never satisfied. Sin gets into your life and it demands more and more and more so that until you allow it to possess your heart, to possess your mind, to possess your soul, which should belong to God. And when this happens, it is only a matter of time before your sin catches up with you. David's sin caught up with him. In, in, in verse 9, it says, 
Wherefore hath thou despised the Lord's commandment of the Lord to do the evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and hast taken his wife to be thy wife and hast slain, his, slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. His sins have caught up with him no matter how far a in the past, your sin is, if you did not repent for those sins, it is still standing in the sight of God. So you need to repent. No, it's, it's been almost like a whole year because the baby was being born, the sun is here, everything, and the, the, it, it has passed. And God, did, what David did, his vile actions are, are still not repented for. He still hasn't asked God. He's going about his life and living his life with Beersheba and his son like it's an everyday norm. What he did, he was the head and he thinks that he could get away with whatever act he, he, he wanted to. The word of God says not so. The word of God says he despised the commandments of the Lord. This means David broke the commandments of the Lord and he had to be punished. David broke the 10th commandment which says thou shall not covet. He broke the 7th commandment which says thou shall not commit adultery. He, com he broke the 6th commandment that says thou shall not kill and you can find all of those in from exodus 20 and verse 17 all the way and, and 14 and 13 david did not recognize his own unrighteousness i say how many of us are living today breaking god's commandments not recognizing our own unrighteousness that we do on a daily basis. Do you know if you're even living according to the word of God? Are you reading the word to know the directions for your life? Or are you just going along with the assumptions of men? David, not because he did not pierce Uriah's heart and took his life personally with the sword, that did not give him, make him free from that guilt of killing Uriah. God held David responsible for Uriah's death. What do you have hidden in those areas of your heart that only God can see, that God will hold you accountable for? David had to be punished. The word of God reads in verse 10 it says now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house because thou hast despised me and has taken the wife of uriah the hittite to be thy wife thus saith the lord behold i will rise up evil against thee out of thine own house i will take thy wives thy wives before thine eyes and give them to thy neighbors and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this this son for thou doest it secretly but i will do this thing before all israel and before the son the things that you do in secret god will let you face them openly David had to face, has, has come face to face, face with his own sin and with the wrath of God. But oh, I love David. He knows how to repent. He knows how to ask God for forgiveness. David went over in Psalms 51. David says, have mercy upon me. Oh God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. David says, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. David says, against thee. He says, I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me against thee. Thee only have 
I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, thou, that thou mightest be justified when thou speak and clear when thou judgest. David acknowledged that he is going to get judged by the Lord. And he says that God, he acknowledges, he acknowledges the Lord. He acknowledges his own transgression. He says, Behold, I am shaping in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. He asked God to clean him. He, he praised God for his forgiveness. He gave God his broken and his contrite heart and asked God's blessings. Uh, is your heart broken? Do you have a contrite heart? Are you looking at your sins? Now, in verse um, 12, David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also has put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. Even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God showed David mercy and Spear in, by sparing his life, but David still had to be punished for his sins. So the, in verse um, 12 and verse 14, it says, it, it says, Here be it, because by he, this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme the child also that is born unto thee, shall surely die none of us is immune from sin do not seek to excuse it or cover it we are not immune to it so what we should do is confess it like david has done to the lord so he can take it away so that we will know joy and the blessedness of our sins being forgiven in Titus 2 verse 11 and 12 reading from the NIV version says for the grace of God has appeared that often that offers salvation to all people it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly possession and to live and to live self-control upright and godly lives in this present life. I tell you today that salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to man by which you can be saved. Romans 8, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 tells us that if ye confess with thy mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in the heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believe and is justified, and with the mouth one confess and is saved. You have heard the word of the Lord. You have been given a second chance. The Lord is God is having mercy upon you today. He is speaking to you. Do not turn away from him today. Pray with me right now. Confess all your sins to him. Recognize your unrighteousness and confess it to him today. Accept his grace right now and pray with me this prayer. Give your life to the Lord and start afresh today. Come and pray with me. Bow your heads and pray this prayer. Repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner in need of your salvation. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and change my life. I believe you died for my sins and rose again from the dead. I turn from my sins, Lord, and invite you to come into my heart and change my life. I receive you as my Lord and Savior, and I choose to follow you and serve you for the rest of my life.
in your name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. If you have prayed that prayer, you have been saved. Welcome to the kingdom of God. But if you don't have a church home and you would like to inbox us or uh, on Facebook and YouTube and become a part of Ministries of Hope Christian Church, we welcome you with open hearts, arms and open hearts. We will build your foundation on the true living word of God. The number I'm going to be online for the next 15 minutes from 11 to 11:15 Eastern Standard Time and you can call I want to pray with you. The number is 605-313-5388 access code 3790888 pound. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus for today. Thank you for this word. Thank you Lord God that we recognize our, 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 our unrighteousness God and we give it all to you today. Thank you for your word blessing it unto our lives. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen. Our announcement today we have Bible studies live on Facebook and YouTube every Wednesday night starting at 6 p.m. Pray with us on Tuesday nights from 7.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. at 605-313-5388. The access code is 379-088-POUND. Sunday School is a continuation of Bible study on Ministries of Hope Christian Church Facebook and YouTube. Um, the YouTube starts a little bit later than um, uh, on Facebook. Um, it is at 9.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Our Sunday morning sermon is broadcast every Sunday on Ministries of Hope Facebook and on YouTube at 10.30 a.m. Donations to this ministry can be made at ministriesofhopechristianchurch.com using the square or PayPal. Thank you so much for joining us and may God bless your lives in a mighty way. Have a blessed day.